Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the string functions in Microsoft Access to validate part numbers. We're going to learn about the left, right, mid, length, and in-string functions. We're going to see how you can take a bunch of part numbers and determine if they're valid or not. Your vendor has a specific format for their part numbers. Well, this will let you check to see who gave you a list of bad part numbers. And of course, you can use these techniques for checking all kinds of strings, phone numbers, email addresses, whatever. But these are the basic string functions that you'll use all throughout Access. Let's take a look. Today's question comes from Zoe in Great Falls, Montana, one of my Platinum members. Zoe says, when placing an order with our primary supplier, we have to make sure the part number is valid. They have a gigantic database of parts, and it changes constantly, so looking up each part number isn't practical. They do, however, have a specific format for all of their part numbers. If I could just make sure my users are typing in the part numbers in the correct format, that would eliminate 99% of my problems. I import most of this data from Excel sheets, so I can't use an input mask. You wouldn't believe the junk I have to correct. Could you help me, please? So in chatting with Zoe in email, sometimes she gets a text file, sometimes she gets stuff in Excel, sometimes people just email her a list of parts, and she just wants to copy and paste them into Access and just make sure they're all valid. And if, if one of them out of you know 100 is not valid, she just wants to very, very easily see there in a query or a form or whatever that that part number isn't in the right format. So we're going to use the string functions, left, right, mid, length, and in string, to make sure that all of our part numbers are in the right format. And this also gives us a chance to learn the string functions. Now, what's this format that all the part numbers have to be in? Well, the left, the first character on the left has to be the letter P, okay? Then the right three characters of the part number have to be a number greater than 100, okay? The whole string has to be exactly nine characters long now, these last two I added myself. Zoe didn't tell me this, but I added it for the lesson because it's cool. All right, the fifth character has to be a hyphen, and there has to be a letter X somewhere in the part number. All right, and if all five of these conditions are met, we have a valid part number. Zoe, you can just ignore the last two. I know you need this for real work. The rest of us are just goofing around. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, let's just build a query, and we'll set up these conditions. Okay, here I am in the Tech Help free template. This is a free download off my website. You can go grab a copy if you want to. There's a link down below. But you can use any database you want for this. We're just going to build a table and a query. So let's go to Create and Table Design. And we just want a list of part numbers. It's that simple. So I'm going to put in here ID, auto number, and then P will be our part number. All right, that's what we're going to be just importing. Now, you don't even need an auto number in this table if you really don't want one. But it's good practice. So let's put one in here. All right, I'm going to save this as my part no T. All right, it's my list of part numbers. And literally, all she wants to do is come in here. All right, if she gets a list of them, just take them and just, you know, paste in here what the users give them. Okay, that kind of stuff. All right, so we need a query to make sure that is a valid part number. Okay. All right, so let's go make a query. Save changes, sure. All right, create. Query design. Here's my query. I'm going to bring in my part number T. All right, if you've never made queries before, go watch my video on queries. Now, we are going to need one function called the immediate if function, the if function. It lets us do an if then inside of a query, right? If this is something, then set this other value to that. If you've never watched my if video, go watch that right now. All right, there it is, my if function, immediate if. Go watch it. Pause this. Come back to it, Okay. Once you know how to do the if function, now come on back, we'll learn some string functions. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is bring P down. And why did I call it P, by the way? Just to keep my formulas small. This should be like part number or whatever you want to call it. I just made it P, so all my equations down here are nice and tiny. Okay, so the first thing we have to do, all right, what's our list of, of stuff here? Our list says the first character has to be a P. So let's isolate each part of the string into its various parts. Okay, I'm going to get the left first character, the left character number one from that string. How do I do that? 
Well, I'll create a field down here. I'll call it L1. That's the name of this field. Is going to be left P comma one. All right, the left first character of P, which is this guy. All right, if I run it now, there's the left first character P. If I come down here and type in like this, I get an X. All right, if I type in this, I get a W. That's the left first character. Okay. And none of these are valid so far. <laughs> All right, back to design view. Now, what's the next rule? The next rule says, I got a list here, the right three characters have to be a number greater than 100. So let's isolate the right three characters. So R3, that's the name of that variable, right? These are calculated query fields. If you've never done that, go watch the calculated query fields video. There's a link down below too, All right, down in the link section. All right, this is going to be the right of P comma 3. Okay, let's run it now. There's the right three characters of that string. Okay, now, according to the rules, the next rule is, um, da, 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 da. okay, same rule. Um, the right three characters have to be a number greater than 100. So let's convert this over to a number. Oh, someone's beaming in. All right, now, None of these right now, except this one here, are valid numbers. So the other ones should come up with either error or something else. So let's see what happens here. Let's convert these over to a number. Let's call this the uh, R3N for number. We'll make this the value, V-A-L, of R3. See what I did there? Run that. Okay, we got zeros for those. Sometimes you'll get an error from some of the functions. Like another function you could use is CLNG, which is convert to long, convert to long integer. If you run that, you'll get an error if it's not a valid long. But if you use val, V-A-L, the value of a text string, it'll come back with zero, which is fine for this example. Okay? You can also use is numeric to see if it's numeric first. But since we're checking for a number greater than 100, this is fine. We can get away with this because zero is invalid anyways. Okay, what's next? What's the next rule? The next rule says the fifth character has to be a hyphen. So let's isolate the fifth character. Let's call this one uh, M5. Mid5 is going to be the mid of P, comma, 5, comma, 1. That says give me the fifth character and go one character long. So if I wanted like the fifth, sixth, and seventh characters, I'd say 5, comma, 3. Right? Characters 5, 6, and 7. So start at 5 and go 3 across. That's how that one works. So give me that. All right, there's D, Y, and 2. So you can see there's a D, a Y, and a 2. That's the fifth character. If you go if you go 5, 2, like that, then you'll get two characters there. Okay, but we don't want that. We just want one character for this example. This is one of the bogus rules that I added, but that's okay. I'm trying to teach you guys stuff. So sometimes I, sometimes I embellish the questions just a little bit. Is that okay, Zoe? Hope you don't mind. You can just ignore that part. Okay, what else we got to do? All right, the whole string has to be nine characters long exactly. So we'll use the length uh, function to, see, to get the length of a string. So L is going to be the length of P. What's that going to return? Run it. Look at that. Those are all seven characters long. So none of those are valid because we need something that's at least nine. So I got to put two more characters in there. There you go. So that one, we're working on this one being valid. All right, doesn't start with the P. Let's start this one with the P. There. Okay, and we need a, a hyphen in character 5, right? So let's put a dash there. Okay. All right, look, this one looks good so far. Okay, last rule. There has to be an X somewhere in the part number. Well, to see if something, a, a, a character or a substring exists inside of another string, we use the instring function. Instring, I-N-S-T-R. So this one's going to be X, we'll call it, because we're looking for an X has to be in string, all right, P, comma, what am I looking for? X inside of quotes. All right, here, I'll zoom in. That one's a little harder to see. See? X equals in string P, X. So I'm looking for an X inside of P somewhere. All right, and access is being nice by putting little brackets around that P. Of course, we don't need the brackets because we don't have spaces in our field names. That's access beginner one. Go watch it. Four hours long. It's free. I insist. Ready? Go. Okay. Now, in string will return a zero if that character is not found. So we don't have an X in this one or this one, but we do have an X in this one, and it returns the position. 
So if I have an x right there, let's say, now it returned a six. So we have to make sure we just have to make sure that x is not zero. It's got to be greater than zero. Okay. So now we have all of the components of this string broken down into the various pieces. We have the left one. We have the value of the right three. We have m5 for that hyphen. We have the whole length of the string, and we know if there is an x because this will be greater than zero. Now we just have to put all this together using the if function to check all of our conditions. All right, this is going to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to shift F2, zoom in. All right, I'm going to move this up so we can see everybody. Okay, so let's put all of our stuff together. So we're going to call this field is valid. And we're going to put either the word valid or invalid in all caps here. So we can very easily see, you know, that it's not valid. All right, so we're going to say if, and here's all of our conditions. All right, the first condition, left one has to be a P. So L1 equals a P, all right? And what's the next condition, all right? R3N has to be greater than 100, okay? Remember, right? The right three characters have to come out to a number greater than 100, and R3N is the numeric one because we use the val function, all right? And M5, whoops, M5 equals a hyphen, that's easy, right? And L equals nine, the whole thing has to be nine characters long, right? And X is greater than zero. X has to be somewhere in that string, all right? If all of those conditions are met, comma, what do I put here if it's true? Just put valid, all right? Nice little word, right, valid. Comma, if it's not true, put invalid, like in, you know, big caps with a stars around it so that you can quickly and easily see Zoe that's not valid. All right, hit OK, and now run it. There we go. Looks like it's working. So you got two invalid ones and one valid one on the bottom. Let's put another good one in here. So when you got P, uh, X, K, 2, dash, uh, O, three, four, five. And that one's valid. All right. But if I put something else in, let's not, let's not make, meet, meet a couple of these here. Let's say it starts off with a T and then the rest of it's good. X, K, two, dash, J, one, one, one. That one's still not valid because it started off with a T. But if I change that to a P and now it's valid. Okay. So now you can copy and paste in your big block of part numbers from wherever you've got them. And then just look down this column here, and you'll see all the invalids. And if you want, you can embellish this a little bit. You could put this in a form, use some conditional formatting, right? Make all the valids green and the invalids show up as red. I got videos on how to do that, right? Conditional formatting. I'll put a link down below. You can go watch that. That's free, too. All right. I'll save this as my part number Q. All right. And now you can see whether or not all your part numbers are valid or not. So, Zoe, I hope that answers your question. Members, in the extended cut, we are going to do password verification. All right, we're going to learn some new cool stuff. All right, we got, a, we got our users with their passwords, right? They've got a current password. They want to change it to something new. We're going to make them enter it a second time, so make sure those are the same. Make sure that password isn't the same as the old password. Make sure that it's at least eight characters long. The first character has to be a capital letter this time, not just a letter. Okay, so we're going to do a binary string comparison where I'm going to teach you how to check whether something's capital or lowercase. Then we're going to say the password has to contain at least one lowercase letter, at least one number, and at least one special character from a list. You can see them there on the screen right now, right? Exclamation point, pound sign, dollar sign. So we're going to write our own function called isFound. And that's going to say, does any character from string one appear anywhere in string two? We have to write that. It's going to contain two loops. We'll do a for loop, and then I'll show you how to convert that into a while loop. There's some debugging in this because a bug crept into the code somewhere, so I'm going to teach you how to find it with some debugging, setting watch points, break points, that kind of stuff. Uh, lots of cool stuff. 48 minutes in this extended cut video. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Gold members can download these databases. And if you have any questions, of course, feel free to post in the comments.
And if you really want to learn a lot more about string functions and access, I've got a comprehensive guide to access functions. I go through all the string functions, logical functions, currency functions, uh, financial functions, you name it. But Expert Level 25 covers all the string functions, all the ones we covered today and, and more. All right, in string reverse, and we got L case, U case, trim, all these, replace, um, string comparison, logical functions, is date, is numeric, all, all kinds of stuff. All right, hour and 33 minutes long. It's on my website. I'll put a link down below. Tons of examples in that class, too. But all you have to do is become a silver member, and you can watch all the extended cut videos, too, which have a lot more great stuff in it. So I got my, I got my full courses, and then I got the Tech Help Extended. So whichever one you want, I got something for everybody. How do you become a member? Click the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.